This is the first episode of Phil and I's podcast here, Over the Bars. That's the official title. We don't know why it's called that. We're, we're going to figure that out as we go. But uh, Ryan Mills, guest here, longtime friend of mine. We used to be pretty close. He used to actually live in the same city as me in Portland for a while and it kind of disappeared for a little while there. Sir. So thank you for coming, Ryan. Uh, we're really happy to have you here. Thanks and, for having uh, Hopefully this is recording and sounds okay and you can see us all. It's, Hopefully. Those are our main goals today. We're, we're hoping to get Ryan's story, but ideally we're just hoping to get it recorded. So, <laughs> so uh, Phil, you want to introduce yourself real quick? Uh, yeah, at Phil Braun on Instagram, follow me. I only have 30,000 followers. Yeah. Uh, he gave me a highball earlier, and I'm zooming. Phil drank a highball. Phil is a sober guy. Yeah. And uh, he drank a highball. Shout out to Highball if you want to send us any of these. On my, I brought a Red Bull. Put my address Swapped somewhere. it out for this thing. And it's like 15 Red Bulls. Yeah, I got everybody on the highballs. I got everybody on highballs and jewels. I'm a sort of good influence, but it's debatable here. No jewel for me. Yeah, so. <laughs> it's, I, from cigarettes, from cigarettes. Yeah, not just from scratch. No, I strictly smoke a tobacco pipe. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, let's get into uh, what's relevant here. This is Ryan's story. So it's funny because I only listen to murder podcasts and hearing myself <laughs> right now, I'm waiting for a murder to happen. <laughs> yeah, it's like, oh, is this a true crime? So actually, the, no matter what this gets into, it's not going to be as grim as what I'm normally listening to. <laughs> Same. It could get close, though. Uh, it could get close. Yeah, actually, true. one of the details, interesting here, me and Ryan went out last night for some dinner and pretty much every single topic we started talking about, I said, we better just stop. I want it to be fresh when we talk about it in the podcast. <laughs> so I guess that's my future with everybody that I talk to now that's going to be a guest. But uh, yeah, Stop talking. Wait, yeah. until, wait until the mic. Save it. I want it to be real. Damn. Uh, so we're here. We're highballed for the people. Um, Ryan, uh, let's just get it started here. You, you were a pro bike rider. That's, that's kind of how we know each other. But I'd like to go before that and just ask you, how'd you get into bike riding? All right. Um, let's see. Uh, I was probably four or five years old, and uh, my dad got me and my brothers race bikes, and we got into racing for a little bit, and uh, so it kind of started from there, and then kind of put that down for a little bit, and then when I moved to Vegas, when I was like probably twelve years old, maybe eleven, I started riding just around town and having fun and. Uh, meeting some other people that that ride, and then we just started getting into it, and it was like, you know, the funnest thing in the world. So yeah, did yeah. you race at all? Yeah, just just a you little did, bit. Yeah, right. yeah. So you did compete in racing. Phil, did you ever race bikes? No, no. I, I like got a bike because I saw um, the X Games in San Francisco. Okay. Here, yeah, that was a good one. I was like, oh, I better go buy a bike. I got, a, I did yard work. Okay. And whatnot. Yeah. And, okay. I, I wasn't. Oh, okay. I used a counterfeit one hundred dollar bill to buy my first bike. Wow. It was on layaway. I paid it off with counterfeit money. It's yeah. fine. Nice. I'll forgive you for that. Time's passed. <sighs> you didn't own the bike shop. Bud. No, 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 no. I just mean as me, the general soul of the world, bike shop owners. Fuck. <laughs> I'm um, sorry. So wh- let me pause this conversation real quick here. Is the camera recording? Mm. <laughs> I don't see a red dot. I think you fucked up, Rich. <laughs> ah. Be right back. Pause. Second thing, how is it possible that it's completely out of focus? Don't tell, no. It's literally set on autofocus. Hey, at least we got the first... Wasn't recording. We're starting over. Okay, we, Take got, two. we got the first hiccup out of the way. Now you got to pause and delete that. No, it's fine. Yeah, just put a logo up. <laughs> yeah, boom, right High, here. Brought to you by Highball. Yeah. Brought to you by Highball. I'm literally going to email them and be like, hey... We do this fucking podcast. We have 15 million followers on Instagram. Yeah. Send us some highball. We want to get juiced. We want our balls to be high. I was looking at it backwards and I didn't put it on the right focus button, so uh, blame uh, me. Ooh. So, okay. Take two. Take two. We're back. Um, <laughs> I think I think we'll just run some black over that intro and uh, we'll bring it in right here. Cause okay. Because it's, it's a podcast. It's about the audio. True. Very yeah. true. And we nailed the audio. So there's gonna be a sick montage of photos. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's, <laughs> that's five minutes. That one's gonna be. Uh, we'll do the whole. Uh, what is it? A vacation slideshow that people love. Maybe we could put that Green Day song over it just lightly. Ooh, I, bing, know. Bing, bing, bing. I know yeah. what we're talking. Yeah. About. Yep. We should definitely and do that. So uh, we got through Ryan's childhood. Me and Phil didn't race. 
No, we're, we're losers. We're late. You're a winner. <laughs> yeah. So you went through the childhood. You got into the racing. You didn't stick with it. Why didn't you stick with it? Well, I wasn't into competing at all. I just liked going around the track because it was like the funnest thing. Just right. Like, you know. Heard and that. It taught me some bike control too, so that helped a whole lot. Yeah. Did Did your other friends ride bikes and stuff too? Yeah. Yeah. Just uh, before that, I was into like basketball. And, Same, dude. Yeah. I quit the basketball team in sixth grade. Yeah. I wanted to go around a race. Yeah. I tried out in like ninth grade. And I was like, you know what? Nah. Yeah. My knees. Yeah. My knees were already giving me trouble at that point. Yeah, it's like this dude is yelling at me to make the shot. Yeah. It's like, what? What? I, well, I used to like the shot, but not when I'm yelled at. Right. This changes everything. Let <laughs> yeah. me swap out basketball when my knees hurt for a way more high impact. Right. Sport. <laughs> right. <laughs> Smart. Yeah. Decision. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Priorities are straight. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, uh, interestingly, there, uh, what I'm wondering is, what happened to those friends that you were racing with? Did they stick with riding too? Did you guys go long term together? What? They they went a while, uh, yeah, probably like, yeah, but they're not riding anymore. But uh, they they were with me for a good four or five years in the beginning, and then the the crew kind of grew, and then those other people were with me for longer. Um, and uh, a lot of them don't ride anymore though. Yeah, so. yeah. What? It, I know this is kind of a vague question, but what do you think drove you so much at that point in time? Like why? Obviously, you just sort of obsessed over this thing and really stuck with it long term. What What do you think was causing that? I think fun. Yeah, <laughs> like yeah. it's the funnest thing ever. And progressing and learning stuff, you get so psyched on the just land, learning a new trick, landing anything, like going yeah. going bigger each time. Did you Did you get the feeling like it was like the first thing you were good at? That type of feeling. Yeah, kind of. Yeah, I. I I was I was decent at basketball, but it wasn't like same. Yeah, you know, yeah, I was all right at it, but everybody played it. So right. Yeah. I, I had to yeah. actually compare myself to everybody, which is not what I'm into. So I was like, I'm gonna go do the thing nobody does, be okay at it, and be the best on my block. <laughs> yeah. <you know? laughs> right. Yeah. Isn't that crazy? How you have like a little squad of people you start riding with, and it's like not even the better you get, or the better they get, but like further you separate. Yeah. It's so weird. Yeah, there's a lot of weird subconscious competition mm -hmm. and uh, hierarchy, it's dominance like, hierarchy. Is all yeah, yeah, it's like, oh, he's so good, he's going to get sponsored, then you don't want to ride with him yep. anymore. It's like, yep. it's like levels, it's so crazy. Yeah. And it looks like you were the top dog that came out on. It sounds like it. Meshed yeah. out. Yeah. Which is cool. Yeah. So that's pretty cool, man. I, I feel like we all kind of went through that same thing. Were, were you a crazy kid or were you like a mild man? I was I was always pretty mild, um, as far as like uh, everything else but bike riding. You know? Yeah. So I was just like. So you were responsible for doing what your parents wanted. Yeah. And bike riding yeah. was the escape at that point. Yeah. Time. Always did my schoolwork. Did you know finish high school, went through college, did all that. So very yeah. rare for being yeah. yeah. to finish high yeah, school and go to college. Yeah. 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 Well, with where this story is going. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not gonna. Not gonna give away anything, but it <laughs> might not be the answer. Yeah. Um, so, so that's pretty crazy, man. What? Uh, so you went through all of that. Were you into partying or anything? I mean, I know you know in middle school, high school, it's pretty minimal. But yeah, what, you know, where were you at? A couple, couple house parties here and there, yeah. drinking a little bit, not hardly ever. It wasn't something you thought of. Yeah, that. it wasn't. Yeah, same, so, uh, dude. I was pretty against it. Yeah, yeah. against cigarettes, against you know just. It was like terrifying to me. Same so, here, man. Yeah. yeah, it's interesting how that works. What about you, Phil? Never anything. Never interests me. Never. I, I spent all my money on bikes. I didn't have any, like, there was one time when I was 14 where someone, like, convinced me to buy, like, remember that drink Sparks? I was oh, like, oh, yeah. Sparks. <laughs> Love like, yo, it's like your energy drink and it, like, gets you fucked oh, up. And they made your mouth so orange. And I was oh. like, I bought it and I was like, I don't, I'm not going to drink this. I'm like, I'm too young. And I'm like, this seven dollars could have bought me a break cable. I love that outlook I'm older than you and so yeah. to me Sparks hit when I was in like my mid-20s and oh. uh, I loved them I was <laughs> crazy about Sparks um, it's like the Four loco of its day pretty much it was it was yeah. exactly Four loco. it was a malt liquor that gave you energy mm -hmm. and uh, if you're somebody who's not really into drinking that's your kind of drink yeah every BMXer who was like under you know age drank those all the time and it's like and rich yeah. was just like <laughs> stupid sloppy drunk on these things but i yeah. never that was the one time where i was like i got something in this. i kept it together but i loved the sparks <laughs> yeah so i'm with you but yeah i'm i'm with you man i probably until i was even like 20 years old the idea of drinking or anything was just just seemed stupid yeah. waste of time i was right on phil's page it's and, crazy and your page yeah because like everybody 
with me, it was like, oh, once you get to this age, once you get to this age, and it just like never changed for me. So yeah. I was like, I, to my walk. I might as well just ride this wave. Yeah, no, I'm with you. Good, yeah. wave. Good wave, man. Yeah. Good wave. <clears throat> it's something. So quick, quick, just break from the trajectory on here. Is it accurate that your ex-girlfriend Natalie? Tell me here. Was her face really the original cult logo? Yeah, that's is, that's true. Is so, that still the same face they print today? The screen face. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Holy shit! Yeah, iconic. Right. That is very iconic. That's yeah. yeah Half the SoCal has a fucking shirt. Yeah. On. Shout out to yeah. Natalie. I remember from Portland. Well, yeah, <laughs> pretty crazy. Shout yeah. out Natalie for being the face. Yeah, of yeah. Because <laughs> Colt was a deep thing. You know, I I don't know the Austin scene and all that, but you know they're making zines. Mm-hmm. And everybody's partying. Yeah. You know, it's a small world. Natalie's actually the reason I moved to Portland. Like, because right. I lived in Vegas, she lived in Texas. We met in New York at a contest, and then uh, I was like, oh, I'm gonna move to Portland. You wanna move there with me? And we just like moved in together and started dating. Like, crazy. Damn. Yeah, yeah it's crazy. That's heavy. Yeah. Back in the day. <laughs> yeah, so the reason this is relevant is because I'm a Portland local by all, uh, by all means, and you moved to my hometown. Yeah. Yeah, so we became closer friends through that to an extent. Right. So that was in. Uh, I was in mid two thousands, I think that time, and and that was really right around when you were starting to get sponsored and that type of thing, right? Yeah. That's when premium <clears throat> came along. Yeah. So yeah, I was going on a lot of road trips with them and going traveling the whole world and kind of getting a little into partying and uh, drinking, but nothing really past that. Maybe a little weed here and there. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. So. Uh, what was your but, guys's What was your guys's house called? Uh. The, was it the premium the condo? premium condo, the mutt condo, because yeah. there's a ton of different like sponsored bike riders there. Right. Yeah. I remember premium condo. I feel yeah. like that was a regular staple in our scene. Like, oh, we're going to the premium condo today. Yeah. We had like 12 guys living in a three-bedroom. Yeah, that place partied. Yeah, it was crazy. <laughs> yeah. I didn't. So I was like, yeah. I'd go in and be like, who wants to go ride? Yeah, you, it, was rare. <laughs> it was rare to see your face over there. Yeah, it wasn't. That was not a <laughs> yeah. common occurrence. I might have been in the parking lot outside waiting to pick somebody up. Right. Let's <laughs> yeah. go yeah, yeah, I was that guy. I was Phil. No. I was the Phil. I mean, you know, only, wants that. only on one level. Only on one <laughs> level. So, yeah, Phil was still holding it down. But, uh, so from there, you got sponsored. And what, did you take any cool trips? What was the coolest place you ever went through that? Oh, man. That's a hard question to answer because uh-huh. there's so many cool places. Like, like, yeah. Uh, I, I like. Pick one right fucking out. Uh, okay, uh, I like I like I like France a lot. Oh, just what you went to France? Yeah, France yeah, was awesome. I've never been to France. Was yeah. that a premium trip? Premium trip. Wait, was uh, there a video that came from that specifically? From that one? No, there, it was like a Fies comp, the first Fies comp. Oh, okay. And those we just made a big there. comeback. Yeah, did like yeah. a I don't know if you, the Soul BMX magazine. Oh yeah. We did like a little article on that, and that that was Damn. really fun. That's throwback. Damn. So did you ride Marseille skate park? I don't remember. <laughs> I hear you. Yeah. <laughs> I feel you on that, dude. The trips do all tend to blend together. Right. And I don't even know what the Long Beach parks are called. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> good yeah. point. Good point. But uh, Marseille was in Tony Hawk Pro Skater, so give it oh, some. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know I'm, I'm sure we did. Yeah. But uh, so that's pretty interesting. So you went to France, man. Wow. So the bike riding took you pretty far, really. That's, yeah. That's pretty cool. What, anywhere else that's crazy? You go to any, any other countries? So Mexico City was nuts. Oh, Mexico City. Yeah, we did like some demos down there. It was Joe Riley, Josh Harrington, and myself. What a squad, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah dude, like, it was a good whew. time. Yeah. That's yeah. crazy, man. I spent a month in Mexico City once filming Vic Murphy for an Odyssey video. Really? Oh, yeah, and, and crazy plot twist. Right after we got back from Mexico City, he started his own bike company called... Dirt Rose. No, called Industry. Oh, damn. And, wow. and Odyssey had to kick him off the mm. team and delete the video part. So nobody's ever seen it. But it was epic. Super 8 film, one footed flatties off weird brick trains. How many stupid flat tables were there? He all was of them? killing it, man. He was he was bringing back the moves. It was shout out to Vic. It was pretty cool. I had a dirt rust right yeah. I, I him. think he might have got the footage and used it in some Christian video or something at one point. Makes sense. That's kind of the path he went on since then. Yeah. But, the trajectory. Uh, but uh, yeah shout, out Vic. yeah, shout out to Vic and Mexico City. Yeah. Mean, it's a good place. I'm actually going back there here soon. Oh. So, uh, a little tidbit for you there. Um, so that's pretty crazy, man. Did you know it's interesting for me when I went on all those trips, I wasn't old enough to really appreciate it. Yeah, I didn't ever stop and look up. I, my head was down, focused on me, focused on my bike, focused on the spot, what I had to be doing. I really got nothing. Nothing from the cities, the culture. Yeah. Do you feel like that? Uh, kind of. I always tried, tried to embrace it a little bit and like, yeah. kind of like enjoy what was going on. But at the same time, it was like there was so much going on. Like, 
you know, gotta be here, do this demo, go to this contest, uh, mm -hmm. go to this party, go to this bar, like. In and out, that's what it felt like yeah. to me. Here today, gone tomorrow, on to the next thing. Yeah. There'll be a limitless number of things, so why would I even think about it? Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, that's right, there, there are not a limitless number of trips to France. <laughs> right, yeah. It's funny back then, though, because you would go to a couple places like that often. Like, I would go to, like, New York City twice a year for a random BMX thing, and I was like, yeah, New York's my second home, no big deal. Yeah. There in six I haven't been in 10 years now. Right, yeah. You know? So, if anybody out there getting these trips, respect them. Yeah, seriously. So, from there, dude, I'm pretty curious, what happened? Uh, what happened? Uh, we were riding a lot, <laughs> you know, you didn't party. Yeah. You were going on international trips. Yeah. So Something I th changed. I think I think I broke I broke my wrist as a dirt jumping in TJ Levin's backyard, and his, yeah. his jumps were huge. You know? Yeah, so, like, I was never really that great at dirt. And so, like, first, I think the first jump I jumped there, I just, like, rolled and broke my wrist. And this is, like, right before I went to Portland. So, uh, like, most of the time in Portland, I was on pain pills because, uh, you know, that's what the doctors give you when you break a bone. Yeah, so did you break so, the scaphoid? Yeah, the scaphoid. Yeah. So, so, so for people that don't know about that, that is a bone in your wrist that's living that has blood that flows through it. And when you break it, Essentially, the doctors, the first thing they tell you is, oh, no, you might have broke it and caused the blood to not flow through, causing the bone to die, meaning we have to fix it with surgery. We can't fix itself. Yeah. yeah it's, it's kind of a curse for, for most BMX runners. Yeah. And the funny thing is, is I, they gave me all those pain pills, and I ended up being on the pain pills for, like, long term, like two years, and they're supposed to, they're supposed to give it to you for, like, a couple weeks. Yeah. You know? And uh, since... Uh, Vicodins? Yeah, Vicodins. And, and since I've, like haven't done pain pills and it's been over two years now uh i've broken my wrist twice yeah you broke it twice and my back right didn't now. didn't use pain pills after you know, yeah and it was the same spot so right yeah very interesting yeah. so <laughs> <laughs> He'll live with eyeball. so so we're going through i'm trying to think about this man so you broke your wrist you moved to portland i remember i pretty much knew you as wrist brace guy like you yeah. just always had a wrist brace on and you always had a bottle of like yeah. And those were kind of your signatures. You right. Know? Yeah. And we all ever thinks. Um, it wasn't too big of a deal, though. You know, you were hanging out. You still rode yeah. all the time. You were getting clips, doing your thing. Yeah. So, uh... What turned there? Man. Uh, it's hard to pinpoint that, but, uh, I mean, things... Was it a gradual, you know, was it was it like the gateway drug they say? You know, where yeah. you're like, oh, I, now that I'm doing these all the time, I'm yeah. this. And living at the premium condo was a bit of a influence from a lot of outside <laughs> right. people. So I was just, leave them any, any, anything that came in, <laughs> tried like, it out. Oh, let me see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. everybody experiments when they're younger, except yeah. for Phil. Yeah. And uh, right. <laughs> everybody tries stuff out, and I should keep that on the floor if it's kind of loud. Um, yeah, I, I'm with you, man. It, it is what it is. Yeah, so everything was stacking on top of already having pain pills and at that point almost like drinking almost every night like going yeah every so you were drinking night. with yeah. the pills at that point yeah. which is pretty exciting at yeah. First. yeah and yeah, smoking definitely. smoking weed like it was a uh, cigarette right because in portland so just disconnected pretty yeah. much right yeah so so i mean did you have any depression or anything were you escaping anything or was it really actually just kind of just a gradual thing you didn't realize was you know escalating it was, yeah, it was it was gradual, and then uh, I wasn't really escaping depression. I think I was getting depression from being on all that Facts. shit. So, yeah. I mean, then I started using it as an excuse, like, oh, I'm depressed, and it was from that. Mm -hmm. So Yeah, I mean, every drug has a hangover, right? Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, a Vicodin has a yeah. hangover, a beer has a hangover, and a hangover is depressing. Yeah, so all that joy you're feeling from that, those artificial chemicals going into your body you're gonna pay for that just as bad yeah a lot more actually that's yeah. the crazy thing right is a, a four hour high is a what at least a 12 to 24 hour hangover yeah whatever, you and know? that's what you're yeah. trying to avoid when you start abusing them though, right, right. Like, that's uh, the catch yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so yeah you know, that hangover disappears as soon as you take another pill yeah so, so why would you want to feel like, like oh, oh i'm gonna keep it yeah i'm gonna feel it and, yeah 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 i was it's crazy because it wasn't a big deal. I mean, we come from a generation, I'm older than you, obviously, but it's still a similar generation. Our parents were handed out Vicodins like candy. Yeah. All the way up to, to your generation, through mine, you know, as a, as a kid, it was normal to me to just see a 
bottle of Vicodin laying around, pop one for anything. It didn't even matter. It wasn't even a thought. Pop one for fun. It, yeah. was, it just didn't even matter, you know? And I had two ACL knees, two ACL surgeries in my knees a couple years apart through that period of time. And I was straight on Vicodin or Percocet through my entire pro bike riding career. There wasn't a thought. Yeah. It was just literally, well, I've had knee surgeries. So I, yeah. Of course I take Vicodin. Right. You know? And it never became an identity for me. It, never, it wasn't something I talked about or thought right. about. It wasn't even a thing, you know? Yeah. But yet for you, yeah. when, when applied to that social situation, right. it, it changed the whole yeah. thing. I was getting so used to that mental state that I almost needed it to ride at a certain point because I would be, you know, I learned how to ride on it. And yeah. then when I didn't have it, I was like, I fell off. Right. So I was just like, what's going on? Yeah. So I'd always have a pill in my pocket. You ever feel like you had phantom pains when you didn't have it and you like tried to ride? All the time. And right. I always use it as an excuse. Like, or I can't uh, land this, it's cause. Yeah. 100% yeah. on the phantom pain. Yeah. That's, the pills cause the pain. Yeah. yeah it's, but, it's insane. Yeah. It's crazy. It's insane, man. It's, uh, the, the level of psychological hold they put on you subconsciously that you don't realize, it's, mm. people just have no idea. Yeah. yeah, and someone's making a ton of money off of that. Yeah, a yeah. lot of someone's. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yep. they're killing it out there. Yeah. yeah, that's crazy, man. So, so you broke your wrist. You got on the Vicodins. You're partying a little bit. You're drinking a little bit. You're living at the premium condo. It got worse though. It got worse. Yeah. Was so, this at this point? Were you already on Monster? Uh, no, I was. So this is uh, pre Monster. Yeah, this is pre Monster. Oh, okay. Um, when I left Portland. I kind of like ran out of money and was like, I need to go home. Me and my girlfriend broke up, uh, so that was depressing. And uh, I had my pain management doctors were down there, so mm. like pain management doctors. Yeah, they don't exist anymore, by the way. That's what they outlawed, and that's why pills are hard to get. Now. Yeah, yeah. So I got back to Vegas and was getting a pretty heavy supply of Roxycodone, which is Ooh, a step yeah. higher than Percocet. Yeah. And, uh, like, found myself going to the doctor, like, more than once a month and being like, yo, I'm out of my, my prescription, I eat more. And they'd always just write me more. Yeah. And, uh, it's a sell. Yeah. And then yeah. I was like, okay, I'm, I'm running out all the time. I need to up the dosage. So they put me on an even higher dose. And then, uh. They so just build your tolerance for you. Right, yeah. And then they, they get you to that point and they're like, um, okay, uh, you're an addict because this is a, you're showing signs of being an addict. So uh, we're we're not gonna deal with you anymore. So peace out. And uh, you're just left there like what? So now what do you do? So you navigate through the streets. You try and find pills on the streets, and those pills went for twenty bucks. It's each. impossible. They're expensive. So, and like, they're hard to get. Yeah. And Back then they were easier to get. Now yeah. You know since they closed the pain management clinic in the, in the late two thousands. It's all different world, yeah. right? And when your tolerance is ten pills a day, you need a hundred dollars a day for yeah, minutes. two yeah. two hundred even. Yeah, so not gonna happen. And you're just like, uh, man, what am I gonna do? And then eventually you're like meeting all these drug dealers and other people that get high on pills just to get more pills. Yeah. And then eventually that you were going broke and like, okay, what do I do for money? Oh, anything. Right. <laughs> anything I can do for yeah. money. So because my job is getting more pills. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you start. Yeah. You start just stealing, you start fucking people over, uh, and then someone someone one day when you're super sick and super desperate brings in this little black tar booger, and they're like, yeah, this will make you better. Throws it on a foil, light the foil, smoke it with a little straw, and instantly the feeling's gone. And you're like, oh, this is exactly the same as the pills. Yeah, yeah. And That's, that was gonna be my next question. So yeah, so yeah. Me off there. Sorry. <laughs> But yeah, so it's like ten dollars, and you're you're good for a quarter of the day. Right what would you now. say the segue of time was from them cutting you off to you like being at that point with Aaron? Like it, it was probably months. like a month or two. Jesus, yeah. Guys. And I it's was quick. and I was uh, getting yeah. So when I moved back to Vegas, I forgot right to too. forgot to say uh, I got on Monster like right right when I got back to Vegas. Oh, so this is the beginning. Yeah. Three Are we talking and, about Monster Energy drinks? Yeah. 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 I thought we were so, calling heroin monster. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So I was riding for Monster Energy drinks, and I started getting a paycheck, and that paycheck. I didn't even know that. Yeah. That's awesome. So the paychecks are going to pills. Yeah, less awesome. Yeah, they are sending me uh, stacks of Monster Energy drinks, and I would just sell them a dollar each, dollar each. Yeah. Were you getting premium check and Monster? Yeah, I, I actually never got paid from premium. 
just the uh, travel budget. I don't budget. think they paid too Shout much out premium. Yeah. <laughs> no offense to premium. I, I think they were, they, it was a small program that visually seemed like a big program because all the guys got really popular. Girls. Yeah. Yeah, that's the yeah. thing. And it, and it eventually blossomed into yeah. Garrett Reynolds, Chad Curley, et cetera, oh, yeah. which is insane. Mm -hmm. um, well, and that, it wasn't even a big deal to me because I was getting all the bikes I needed and traveling all sure. over, and yeah. it was just, it was sick. And money, it was, yeah, money is never really the thing in BMX. Everybody looks at the sponsorship in BMX and says, what's my salary, what's my salary? But the people that really make it through it long term, they're like, well, I got free wheels from my car, mm -hmm. I got some free food through this weird deal. You know, it's all these deals, and their life is pretty much covered, and yeah. it's kind of like a food stamps card. Yeah. You know, you're like, well, yeah, I don't you need a job. Yeah. I, got the, I got the BMX CBT flowing. You know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> BMX yeah, yeah. CBT. Yeah, like, you know, you're sure, like, yeah. oh, I'm on Fit Flow, and Robbie got me on Vans Flow, and then that got me on Monster Flow, and now I got energy drinks, bikes, and shoes. Shit, all I need is some cheeseburgers. Those are a dollar. Oh, um, yeah. Because I have no health knowledge. Or is it in and out sponsor? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then, yeah, I mean, dudes got those. Not yeah. in and out, but dudes had some weird burger chants, you know, <laughs> Jinkos, their weird stuff was flowing, you know, back then it flowed. Okay. Was it Chrisman who had the burger sponsor? Burger? Yeah. I know uh, he had Jinko. He had Jinko, yeah, Ooh, I mean. He had some other weird sponsor. Oh, no, he had all kinds. Diamondback Jinko. Yeah, he, I mean, he won the X Games. When you, yeah. He had a prefab. Barspin, one-handed food on a sub. Yeah, dude, he, he had a sponsor. prefab yeah. ramp sponsor. What? Uh, yeah, a company that makes skate park sponsored him. Like, what? What did they think he was going to do with that? Yeah, faking you know, this yeah, all they, right. It's not like they built him a skate park and they were just like, put the sticker on. You know, Fire. Times were different. Money was flowing. Yeah. But, uh, so back to heroin. Yeah. Heroin is an interesting subject. I've never done heroin before. Not, well, okay. I've never done regular heroin before. I've pill form, yeah. IV form from a doctor many times, you know. Um, the last time I actually, the last time I went in for back surgery was wild. I, I woke up in bed completely paralyzed, had to be rushed to the hospital, and they put me straight on it. And I was on it for like five days before surgery. Couldn't come off of it. With your own button control. The, with a button yeah. control. Is that morphine? Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. And morphine's just heroin. That's the thing. Yeah. Most, most people I don't think still really understand that a Vicodin, a morphine, a heroin, literally the exact same. The way you administer it can change it slightly. Yeah. Like when it's IV, it's actually, it's interesting. When it's IV, it's too strong. Really? It's, yeah. It makes you feel kind of shitty. Like it's, it's too much and you're like, it basically gives you a headache and you, you're like paralyzed for a minute and then you're chilling. Whereas if you take the pill, it's a mellower version of that, you yeah, know? And then if you smoke it, well, only you know that. Yeah. So. It's all derived from a poppy. So. Yeah. But they're all the exact same drug. That's the thing. There's yeah. literally no difference. It's just I, the name. It's just the name. Yeah. yeah, it's just got an evil name for the people that get it after the one they give you. It's so messed up. You know, it's they give it an evil name after they cut you off, and they give it a pretty name when they're giving it to you. Yeah. That's crazy, but like doing it like intravenously is like my grandma was a heroin addict, and she lost half her arm from abscess. Yeah. yeah. Wow. So like my grandma growing up, she only lived till I was like eight, and she died of an overdose. But she only had half of her left arm because she it got cut off from an abscess. Wow. She like shut up. Crazy. Was she, she, yeah, she just like shot Let up. Let me know if this is too much. No, no, hit it. Was she shooting up into the amputated arm? Uh, oh, for sure. Oh, yeah, yeah. Wow. Like her and, like, it's not my like, grandpa, but like my, her long term boyfriend is like, is my grandpa. They would like shoot up all the time. They were fucked up. But yeah, she like, she lost like half of her arm from an abscess that like just spread too fast. And then eventually she got pneumonia, was in the hospital. My grandpa went to see her. And like shot her up, and she died in the hospital, like wow. instantly. That's a good way to go. Yeah, her body was just like too done, and he was like, "Oh yeah, well, just like shoot me up," and she died right then. Wow, that's it's crazy. crazy. Uh, I was yeah. I was pretty close to losing my arms. Really, absolutely yeah. the same thing. Yeah. He's yeah. got some scars. Yeah. Bro. It's not. Yeah. Show him this. Just show him where I'm going. Oh yeah, dude. It's like same. Yeah. yeah. So all these tattoos are covering these arms. Right right now, that's why I'm getting yeah, yeah. tattoos. Yeah, yeah. The abscess are just crazy. It's just like fucking toxic, straight in. If you mess a vein or. You hit like your epidermis or something, it just like instantly rots. Yeah. It's yeah. fucked up. Yeah. Yeah, abscesses are That's insane. crazy, man. So so uh little segue there. That must have played some part in you. Not, yeah, not um, getting into this. Yeah, yeah. Like my grandma and my grandpa were like heavy drug addicts. My mom's like super heavy on drugs. My house burned down when I was like eight years old. And then like the that was like kind of like the slippery slope. My mom started doing like pain pills, all that stuff, even though she had like never injured. It was mm -hmm. just like post-traumatic chronic disorder. pain yeah yeah I was like phantom and she's like starting pain pills blah blah led like segue to like meth pills and then right. she had a heart attack didn't kill her 
she like got a pacemaker, all this stuff, and then she just like died from complications of that, like when she was like forty seven, like wow. three years ago. Oh, yeah. on, on my way back from Interbike is when I found out. Like, Sorry to two hear years that. ago, yeah. That's rough. Right. Yeah, it's crazy. Like drugs are fucking insane. That's what I was telling you earlier. It's like, yo, like people don't get out of this. Like once you're yeah. down this crazy it's road, rare. it's super rare. Like, it's rare, man. I watched my whole family like. My dad was, like, on the same tip, too, but, like, he fucking went to prison, and it cleaned him up. Yeah. So, it was, like, it either takes, like, catastrophe health-wise, or, yeah. like, jail, or, like, serious charges. Everything crumbles down, and then it's, like, yeah. a reset button. Yeah. Which is crazy, because it never happens. People, like... I think like, we have physiological dispositions. Agreed. Um, and maybe even bigger psychological dispositions mm-hmm. from the way we were raised, the TV we watched, all of it. Right? Everything, like, yeah. you had the grandparents at OD. Mm-hmm. I didn't. You know what I mean? They're yeah, yeah. Probably that bigger than anything. Right. Mm-hmm. What what scared you out of going quite too far, right? You yeah, know? no, definitely. So yeah, I saw like everybody. Because like like yeah. we're saying with Ryan, me and him were doing the same pills. Yeah, yeah. Same. Same. My parents never even really drank. Really, like nothing. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's just like, different patterns, yeah, man. It's crazy so, where life will lead you. Yeah, it's crazy. It's insane. I truly, I never had any interest in the Vikings. That's what's weird about. It. I had them that whole time and all that, but it never mattered to me. Yeah. I never felt a withdrawal from them because I never cared about them enough. Right. You know? But when they took me off of them, that's when all of a sudden I needed them. Yeah. The second they didn't give me anymore, even though I was barely taken, the second they didn't give me anymore, I felt it. I remember it was crazy. I started getting the sweats. Yeah, you're like, what is this? It wasn't <laughs> that bad, but I couldn't sleep. Yeah. It was crazy. I remember I didn't sleep for something like four or five days, and, and sleep deprivation is the craziest drug in the world. There's nothing that'll, that'll really make you more hallucinogenic and weirder and, you know, throw your heart starts beating rapidly. It's, it's a whole thing, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, but essentially from there, they gave me Xanax. <laughs> they said, no, no, don't worry. This will make you not depressed about that. You'll sleep just fine the whole deal. Fuck that. I was on those for probably five years. Five years of them telling me, no, no, you're good now. You know? Here's the Xanax. This is your problem. You just needed to sleep better. You just mm-hmm. needed this. It's a psychological problem. You, you have pain in your body. You have a hurt back, and you just need to get used to the fact that you have a hurt back. This will help you get used to it. Not, 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 not you need to heal something internally. You need, to, get, you need to come to terms with yeah. that. You need to come to terms with this bad shit I'm dropping on your shoulders right yeah. now. Here's some pills to help you. Yeah, here's, exactly. here's a pill that replaces that pill. Exactly. Yeah. That's how it is with heroin. Here, yes. Here's some methadone. Here's a suboxone or whatever, which both... Same thing. I mean, methadone gives you the worst withdrawals once they cut you off of that. Yeah. So, like, you're off heroin, but you're on methadone, which is a government-monitored yeah. like, heroin. Yeah, there's mad times with there, methadone clinic with my grandma. There's like methadone scenes, yeah. there's sub-scenes. Yeah. It's, those are just different heroin sex. Right? Yeah, and mad people use methadone. It's just like, oh, I'm going to go get methadone today because it's, yeah. like, part of my fix. Yeah, yeah. I, I, could, I couldn't get heroin. Nice. So I mean, All the homeless people, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's crazy. Literally in Long Beach, you know, the crazy homeless problem that we have, every city has right now, is based around the locations of these methadone clinics. Definitely. So yeah. they're downtown. There's four or five of them, and that's where you're going to see the, the influx of people. It's real bad over my old house, like uh, Cherry and Anaheim. Okay. It's crazy over there. Yeah. Like, it's a world of difference from, like, 4th to Anaheim. It's nuts. Yeah, man. It's crazy. Awesome. So, yeah, I'm with you, man. That That is insane. I, I went through the same pill thing. The Zans, you know, they, they hooked me in. It's crazy. Those ones are crazy because they're actually much worse, in my opinion. You know, you're, they mess with your psychology, like, in your head. You don't realize what's going on with going on. Yeah. I feel like you can still be somewhat clear-headed on opiates. You know? Yeah, yeah like, it can be like, a lot more functioning. To, to, to that point, when you were really in your prime of shooting up, you know, making it routine, so you, you switched over to the heroin, right? Yeah. And we've hit that point. How many years did you do heroin before it really started affecting you in a more negative manner? You know? how, yeah. many, how many years did you maintain a heroin-finding life? Um, uh, quite a while I was maintaining. Um, I was still going to college. And I was going to class. If it was a three-hour class, I'd bring uh, a needle and, and a spoon with me, and I'd go halfway through the class, go to the bathroom, fix up, shoot up, go back to class, and just kind of like nod out the rest of the time. But like, you know, wow, it was pretty. But you were still learning. Pretty, yeah, I was learning. I was very. Functioning. You graduated, didn't you? Yeah, I graduated. This man graduated. So. Yeah. Did you graduate yeah. college? No, I can mean I got like half a semester left. I quit four times and dropped out of high school. Fire. Shut up. Shut up, BMX. <laughs> yeah, I, I, was, I was still riding pro BMX too. Like during yeah. that time, I had Damn. like 
Yeah, this was might it, be your achievement, actually. Right, yeah, I was, I, was, bad, I was able to, like... This man's productive. <laughs> re, do, re-sign a contract with Monster Energy Drinks for three years for double the pay, like, during all what? this, so, yeah. This Holy is insane. Shit. Yeah, so. yeah, you're making me want to do heroin, bro. <laughs> this is going the wrong way. <laughs> no, don't do it, man. We'll get to the end of the story. That's your This is going to go yeah, further. I'm sure you're yeah. going to talk me out of it. I'm, yeah. I'm going to hold out. I'm not going to do it now. Yeah, just <laughs> wait. Just wait. <laughs> so, so, yeah, you were, you were a completely functioning heroin. Yeah. It wasn't some TV movie. You weren't living under a bridge yet. Yeah. 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 So, uh, it got worse. It got worse. It got worse. I'm curious. What, why did it get worse? So we got over the hurdle of having to shift yourself from the pill fix from your wrist to a, a I don't know what you'd call it, a, an easy to find version. Right. So every, everything changed for me. I had a different girlfriend, uh, towards the end of college and we, me and her broke up. I finished college and did wasn't writing for like the last year of college and didn't re-sign anything mm-hmm. and was like still getting like some pictures of magazines from like the past. Like so it was like keeping me going. But uh so all everything changed drastically in within like a month of time and I was just like, What do I do now? Right. And all I had in life at that point was uh, a needle and yeah. uh meth pipe so yeah. I was like getting you know figuring out how to get money after I didn't have that income and uh, my dad and mom were helping me out with the house while I was in college but I was out of college now so I, I had to figure it all out yeah and, uh, so just reality hit all at once yeah all at once so yeah. I mean I knew how to navigate through the streets and from all the people I met doing drugs with I was able to like live on like couches for a little bit and uh Eventually, you know, you burn a lot of bridges in that community. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, yeah, coasting can only go so far when it's on someone else's dime, like for sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah so everyone's been there, like drugs or not. Yeah, and I, I started going to jail a lot because I was getting caught stealing from stores and right. uh, receipts game. That was, yeah, that was part of it, or just like stealing shit and selling it to people, or straight to the Mexican drug dealer. Mm, yeah. Phil's got some inside knowledge over there. Oh, yeah. dude, I've done some shitty stuff. For <laughs> sure. Not even try. Like it. Everybody has at different points in their life, right? Oh That's, yeah, everybody. You know, we just hope that we uh, just different story grow yeah. out of it. Yeah. So so so, so, so <laughs> each time I got out of jail, <laughs> each time I got out of jail, it got worse and worse. So it'd be like a period, like up oh, go to jail. Okay, I'm sober for a couple of weeks. They let me out. The day after I get out, I'm getting high, and like at this point, I'm like in an alleyway by myself. Yeah. Like, like what the fuck? And You're right. Like, I need I need to find uh, somewhere to sleep because I'd be up for a couple of days on meth and heroin, and uh, like all right, time to find a place to sleep. So I'd find um, unoccupied houses and squat in them, mm-hmm. and uh, that was working for a while, and uh, then it started. What, what year are we? At about right here, do you think? My timeline is it's, so it's jumbled right rough. there, yeah. but it's got to be like 2010 or 2011. Yeah, exactly. So this is, we're going into around the last times I saw you. Yeah, I'd say like, yeah, 2011. Yeah, so like from my I perspective, I saw, I would see you once a year at Interbike at that point. Yeah, yeah. And it was a big jump. Yeah, year. each year I'm getting skinnier and skinnier, yeah, looking it's, shadier. It's and crazy, shit. man. It was, it went from, well, essentially it went from me having my problems that I'm talking about and then blending with yours. Yeah. Like we could, we could relate on that level. You know, you yeah. were, you weren't really into heroin, you were into Vicodins. Yeah. And I still needed some Vicodins too. It wasn't that crazy right. at that point in time, yeah. you know, so we could relate on that point. But then the next year, I remember one time, I think I wanted, I think I was trying to buy some weed from you. I think it was around 2010. I was trying to buy some weed from you, and we went out to your car, and you tried to sell me heroin. Oh, fuck, did I? You, wow. You, you were like, do you want some heroin? And I, just oh, weed, bud. Wow. I just remember going, oh, oh we've hit that point. Fuck. Um, <laughs> I, he, he doesn't know that I don't want to buy heroin, so there's some sort of, you passed the point. Yeah. You know, like, oh, this shit. should have been a pretty understood thing that I wasn't going to buy heroin. Right. That's just this comfortable platform probably for everybody else. Yeah. <laughs> it's like everybody else you would sell anything to. Yeah. It was wild, man. I remember we were sitting in the car and it, it even scared me a little bit. I still had the little kid fear of heroin. I was like, oh God, mm-hmm. you know, heroin. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that was a wild one, man. And you weren't back at the next dinner bike. Yeah. The next dinner I bike I came to, yeah. I, the next dinner bike that I came to, we were partying in a room at the 
What's the one where the guy did the shooting? Uh, Mandalay Bay. We were partying in the room next to the room where the guy did the shooting. Really? Oh, and we were looking out that window, right? There's only a few of them right there. Yeah. They're the, you know, couple hundred dollar suites if you, mm. if you buy them online. They're nice rooms. Uh, we're nice rooms. Um, and we're looking out the window, and we're, I'm with somebody from Vegas, and they go, the last time we saw Mills, he lived under that bridge out there. Damn. No joke. Like, looking out the window, and I remember I had a tear to my eyes looking out the window, I was like, what the fuck? Like, how? How? You yeah. know, we were all in the same place only a couple of years ago. How did this happen? You know? So, maybe you weren't under the bridge. It sounds like you were on the times you were popping out of jail. Vaguely, yeah. You know, yeah. in the alley, under the bridge, wherever you could hide out from anybody getting in trouble. Yeah. Um, that's insane, man. So... It, is this rock bottom at this point? Does it get worse? It gets worse. <laughs> yeah, dude. Yeah. Like, give, give me the rock bottom. The rock bottom. How does it? How is it possibly get worse from in and out of jail, shooting up at alleys alone? Dude, the, just the the people around you, right? Just bring you down big time. Yeah. Uh, like you mentioned, uh, you're in the murder podcast, and we talked about it the other night. And, uh, that is something I wanted to get into. Yeah, yeah. so th that's pretty rock bottom for me. So you're like, oh yeah, there's a murderer in uh, pretty much every city, and yeah. you just don't know. So about we were it. talking about how you know all of us. Phil, I'd be curious to hear Phil's input here. So all of us know the one to three insane kids in our town when we were growing up. Mm -hmm. Your buddy's psycho little brother, whatever, was killing the cats, whatever it was, and we all sit back and we wonder today, is that guy a killer? Right? Mm -hmm. He. I know at least three kids that I think there's a good chance they killed somebody. You know, th this guy probably killed somebody between back then and now. He's probably in prison. I don't think they were smart enough to get away with it. But we all knew the psycho dudes. Phil? I know one who was, like, documented. He, like, did a bunch there of arson. He's yeah. like, he was always crazy in high school. Ten years later, see on Facebook, like, oh, well, so-and-so arrested for, like, mass arson. Yeah. It's like, I knew it. I knew it was going to happen. The, the one kid in my school ended crazy. up. Uh, breaking into a teacher's house, raping and murdering her. All Holy the school teachers. shit. Uh, yeah, and it was a, not just a, not that that could not sound bad, but it was... Uh, Premeditated. It was bad the way he did it, put it that way. Gotcha. He, he went in. Uh, what podcast is this on? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that next episode, tune in. Um, so, yeah, man. The um, question about you going in and out of jail, though, is when you went in one time and did the withdrawal, did, like, returning back to the normality of, like, your shitty people you're with just, like, cancel out? You knew you were going to go through withdrawal once you went to jail again? Like, yeah. you're, you just got out, you're like, I don't want to do that anymore. Two hours later, you with the same shitty people. Well, it wasn't even like that. I was in jail, like, I can't wait to get up to get high. Fuck, okay. Yeah. Was there so, ever a point where you're just like, I'm done with it because the withdrawal is so bad, or did that never hit? I was just on, was too on deep a mission, dude, yeah. Gotcha. So, Withdrawals are crazy. It didn't hit until this very last time I was really? in. Yeah, and I had all these charges hanging over my head, mm -hmm. and I was just like, if I don't shape up right now, I am so fucked. Yeah. yeah. Withdrawals are a crazy thing. They're something that most people can't comprehend. When the Xanax thing has I can't. Yeah. insane withdrawals, yeah. um, but they're very similar to heroin. I think they're worse. But it's really all your physiology, right? How yeah. into it are, were you, et cetera? Right. How hooked, you know? Mm -hmm. But, but you. The simplest way I can put it, and we already related on this point, is your biggest fear is going to sleep. When you go to sleep, mm. the demons come out. The worst mm -hmm. things you can possibly manifest that you can imagine in your life, the second you go to sleep, that's all you're saying. Yeah, I hear like a bunch of people who take Xanax have night terrors like night constantly. Night terrors, man. Yeah, all the it's time. It's insanity. Yeah, yeah. night and terrors and like spotty memory from yeah. like blocks of their yep. life. And all yep. I remember are the terrors. Yep. It's crazy. Um, I luckily don't have that, but, but I have a clear memory of the feeling, mm -hmm. of the, the shakiness, the, but, but the sleeping is the big one. Mm -hmm. that, that night terror, man, and, and this thing called, they call them zaps, they're these electric shocks, yeah. and you're, you're whole, you get these shocks all the time, and they hurt, and you just can't forget the fact that you're in this shitty cycle. That's the problem, it just keeps your thought process down, mm -hmm. you know what I mean, your internal dialogue. But uh, with that said, I think you'll go with me. It just lasts a week, man. Yeah. It's, it's not a fucking big deal. It's yeah, really but, not. But People it's like, talk about it like it's so insane. Yeah. It's a fucking weird It's the biggest deal in the world when you're in Yeah, it's such a big deal that you can't even relate it to the idea of getting off the thing. Yeah. All you can relate it to is well, getting more of the thing. Yeah, imagine the flu, like mm. the worst flu you had, times it by 10. Yeah. And then imagine this one little thing is going to take that Fix all it. away. Hey, you so, know, not only take it away, yeah. Yeah. not a care in the world yeah. right after. Yeah. You know? The fact that you even are in it now won't matter. Yeah. 
you know. It's just going to cancel it all out immediately. Yeah, the yeah. fact that you ain't slept in a week and you're almost off of it, it's almost out of your system, it doesn't even matter. Yeah. It wipes the slate clean. You know, it's, and it's not expensive. That's like the fucked yeah. up thing. No, that's the thing, man. You're like, okay, I could make this decision. It's the best decision I've ever made in my life. Get off all this, get clean. I, but you also don't know that it's a week. And mm-hmm. then when you're in it, you're like, I think this is my physiology for the rest of my life. Mm-hmm. I, I can't night terror it's not gonna for not the rest this. of my life. Yeah, yeah you don't, you don't, you're not rational enough to be like, it's only seven days. We can see you're now saying it yeah. and really trying to tell people it, like, hey, it's only seven days, man. The, the whole thing, it can kill you. No, it can't kill you. Getting on drugs could not kill you. That's, yeah. That is a scare tactic. It's you're like a more like, like likely to die coming up. Ain't this. nobody dying from quitting Zans. The Amy, Amy Winehouse did not die from getting off of alcohol. She, got, she died from a bender, a bender. crazy bender, which is what kills everybody. You, you get off of it, you're off it for two weeks, and then you go back and you try to hit, hit it with the tolerance you had before. And that's it. That's what gets everybody, you know? And you go, ah, I'll fucking throw in some pills and the coke, you mm-hmm. know, whatever. Because you, you think you have it all built up and all that, but you don't anymore. Yeah. The tolerance goes down. Yeah, it's a whole, it's a crazy thing, yeah. man. So, back to that rock bottom part. Yeah. Uh, so I knew I knew the murderer, you know, that everyone knows. So, yeah, we're, we're talking about a murderer here. That's, yeah. This is a big deal. So, so me and Phil, I want to bring everybody back here. So me and Phil were, you know, we got a little sidetracked on our little murder mysteries of our own. But Ryan has a real one that he actually dealt with that essentially was his rock bottom. Right, yeah. So uh, I met this, like, real shady girl, drug addict, and thief and all this. So I'm in a squat house uh, where... Uh, we were like bringing a bunch of shit back from a garage that we just robbed or something. And uh, this this other dude was with us and uh, I uh, got my fix and nodded out. And uh, I guess this girl liked to uh, murder people when they were nodded out. So, OD you. Yeah, so she would like OD you. So uh, I guess this girl had a needle in my arm shooting me up and uh, the dude stopped her. Holy and shit. Uh, yeah. yeah, and uh, a few months later, I mean, there, no one can really prove it, but everyone knows. Like, she got a girl like a few months later in her sleep. Never oh. woke up, so she. So you're almost that. Yeah, and when I woke up from that, I lost the, the use of my right arm for like six months. It Holy was like shit. it was like, you know, stuck like this. Because she had started. Yeah, whatever was in her shit, like I don't, I don't know what it was, but something got in. Yeah, so I was like. Uh, that was close to my. That's insane. My, yeah. How my how long ago was that day from today? Hmm. I would say five years ago. That's not not even that long ago. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. But, but with that said, that was your rock bottom. That yeah. And you've only been two years sober. Two years sober. Yeah. Yeah. So after that, so I, you uh, still went three years. Yeah, I went three more years. I uh, was. Uh, I was. I. Uh, Figured out I could rent an office for 200 bucks a month instead of living in squat houses. Like 200 bucks a month isn't shit to get when you're getting that every day. Mm-hmm. So like just one day you gotta get 400 mm-hmm. and get your drugs and pay your rent or whatever. So I was living in an office and I ended up meeting a pretty wealthy girl and she was buying heroin off of me because I had like one of the best dealers like with the best heroin and uh, she lived in like a mansion. She had a lot of money. She was like a high end like prostitute pretty much mm-hmm. and I started dating her so like I was living the high life I was like driving Range Rovers uh, brand new Jaguars living in a mansion on a golf course and uh, after a lady tried to do after yeah this yeah. is after all that moving up yeah in so yeah way. so it yeah. was like kind of and but at that point I had no veins left to shoot into so I went back to smoking and she was getting into shooting and I was like trying like we'd always have fights like I'd be like throwing away all of her needles like so I had like a little bit of a standard, like you know, you need to, you need to not do this because I've been yeah. down that road. And yeah, you not, were a heroin. Not her so. arms, or like my arms, and I had a roommate that moved in who ended up getting his leg amputated and continued shooting. So just like your grandma. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So and uh, you know he's still on it too. That's you know? crazy, unreal. You'd think after losing a leg, you'd be like, all right, that's it. Yeah. But I guess it's, it can go both ways. Like, all right, I lost my leg. Fuck it, I'm doing this till I'm dead. So, right, because yeah. you, you feel like you're dead at that point. Yeah. yeah. There's, I mean, I haven't been there, but I've definitely been to the point where I felt like I was too far yeah. gone before. You, you're pretty, you pretty much are dead. You've lost respect from any normal person, functioning person. Like, you and can't the be big, trusted. The biggest one is from yourself. 
Yeah, and like you, you don't feel you have you have zero self confidence. Yeah, you have, you're not worth it. Yeah, that's the real problem. Yeah, it's crazy. So, the lady tried to kill you. Yes. Yeah. Somehow you made it out of it, and your material possessions went up. Your, your life didn't, but your yeah. material situation did, which was probably a little bit confusing. Yeah, yeah. and put me deeper into a hot, like a bigger amount of drugs than I ever could handle. Right. And gambling like started me on like, a big gambling habit of just like. Hundred bucks in the machine every five minutes, like. Isn't that like, crazy? Yeah. That's so, insane. Living yeah. on the street, under the bridge, yeah. in and out of jail. We, we and would, now you have money to just throw away. We would, we would gamble until we got sick and needing drugs, and sometimes run out of money and not be able to buy drugs. So I had to go out and steal. Uh, it was and, like which habits yeah, worse? Yeah, it was crazy. It was a debate. Yeah. Never, never bought food. I would just go in a grocery store, put all this food in the car, and just walk out. Yeah, every almost every day. That's so, so crazy. Yeah. That's crazy, man. So, so that was your rock bottom, mm-hmm. and from there you kind of went up. You, you went on a tangent from there. Yeah. It's hard to hard to really describe where you went. So, at what point from there, living in the house, gambling, doing the crazy thing, was your first attempt at actually getting clean? Um, I never really tried to get clean while I was living there, and I went to jail probably eight times while I was living there. And each time I get out, and that's the house I would go to, and it was full of drugs. So I never was able to quit. And then I go to jail this last time over like a stolen laptop I stole from some politician, I guess. Like it, it was just a backpack I found in a casino and grabbed it. And it turned out to be a politician from Big Reno. Bag. Yeah, and it was just like a huge deal. So like they just came full force and got my ass and took me in. Uh, I ended up being let go again, getting high again, and then. Didn't go back to the court, so I had a warrant, and then I went back again for my warrant, and was like laying there this time, like, all right, <laughs> I cannot keep doing this, and uh, I was just like, I was calling my, like, I hadn't talked to my parents in a while, and so I was calling them, like talking to them, they're like, all right, you need to, this is this is the one, like, yeah. and uh, uh, my public defender called me on the phone and was like, uh, yeah, we're gonna put you in drug court, and like most people are just like, oh man. I don't. I can't. That's impossible. No one can even get through that. That right. was the thing. Like you can't. It's designed to fail. It's too strict. Yeah. And yeah. I was, I was just like, all right. That's probably exactly what I need. So it's like, I'll take that deal. Yeah. So yeah. for for people that don't know, drug court is when they put you on. Essentially, you yeah. get all the fines. You get the the P test, the regular P O visits, counseling, a very uh, strict schedule, yeah. having to do things that that p- regular people with jobs and cars would have a hard time doing. Right. But you're a heroin addict. Yeah. And you have to show up on time. Right. And it makes you accountable, like yeah. teaches you the tools to not, you know, like to identify your triggers and all this. Right. Like, and then they have you just doing pretty much impossible stuff. So I see where people get that it's impossible, Yeah, you know, because it's not a very successful rate of like graduates from that. Yeah. I, I, I'm curious. You said one thing. You said that you started talking to your family again right before that. Yeah. Did, do you feel maybe that that put something in you? Reconnecting with uh, your family. Yeah, that definitely did. And, uh, you know, with, without them supporting me, uh, I would have been right back in it. Right. Like, they were there when they didn't even live in Vegas anymore. They had moved to Texas, but they were there when I got out. And they were just like, all right, we're doing this right. I got put to a sober living house and uh, was just doing everything I had to do. Like, and I hated it at first. I kept wanting to run. I was yeah. just like, I don't want to do this. And I ended up in the hood one day where I used to get high. And this one guy just talked like I was about to run. And he's, he's just like, dude, just just do this shit. Inspire the rest of us. And that one talk just like flipped my brain. Yeah. It was so, so at first your family believed in you. Yeah. And then one of your fellow. Yeah. Fellow, uh, fellow drug users. Yeah. He's just like, you got this, dude. Just it's crazy because that's people just show you love. Yeah. Yeah. And then you were able to possibly show yourself some. And yeah. And then another huge thing that kept me clean was getting another bike and yeah. and just getting in touch with my old friends that rode and them not judging me and them giving me a second chance. Yeah. So I owe a lot to those guys. Yeah, that's, that's the Brown Grip crew. And, you know, to put it further, I know I'm beating a dead horse here, but a third segment there of people showing you love. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And then I feel like what I'm hearing here is maybe your self value was able to grow through all. That. Yeah, all a whole lot of confidence came back in my life, in my writing, in the. I'm sure your self value and the writing are hand in hand, right? Right. That, to yeah. To you, is that's like the, the main, most you've made yeah, of yourself. It's very important. Yeah. You know? 
and then ever since then it's just been more and more love like reconnecting with you reconnecting with everybody meeting you like just no one you know everyone's psyched to see me back riding I, I thought everyone was gonna be like fuck this guy right like what are you doing right and it's just the opposite it is the opposite and like yeah it's it, it was shocking to it's me. it's so few people because that are saying fuck this guy yeah, ever in be, any situation yeah because like the whole time you're, like, you're getting high and you've lost sight of everything mm -hmm. you're like because you um, became the fuck this guy guy yeah you're yeah. hollow right yeah so like you, you're thinking oh, I could never go back to that like yeah. so I was I was pretty much set my ways and thinking I was I was gonna die an addict of heroin for sure yeah so that guy gave you that advice how yeah. long until you got clean from that moment. I was already clean at that moment is when I got out of jail. Right, right. You yeah. were about to run, sorry. Yeah. yeah, and I had a house arrest bracelet on my ankle, and you cut that, it's a felony, mm -hmm. and I was just like, had scissors in my hand. I was just like... How long were you in the sober living? Uh, three or four months, three. and that, it got, that went kind of sour, but at that point, my dad had already... Like offered me an apartment to live in mm. because I was getting the trust back from him as well, and so I was living in this other apartment after like sober living is kind of a sham as well. It's kind of crazy. It's just it a big is. money it's making too strict, scheme. Yeah. My dad to this day is in sober living like yeah. four years after prison. Yeah. Still yeah. on it. Yeah, yeah. I've only had one friend that did it, and he committed suicide a year later. So it's yeah, it's crazy. It's like crazy religious and strict and like it, old. Uh, it's too much. Yeah, was that yeah. years also it's just crazy religious. It's just not really so religious. My, my thing was, is the dude that I ended up, like, I was in one sober living, and then we, like, a couple of us jumped ship and went to this new one, mm -hmm. and it was, like, a community living or something, but this dude was, like, a lawyer and had, like, this money backing him from somewhere, and he was, he was getting high, mm -hmm. and I knew it. Not everyone knew it, but yeah. I knew it, and I was just like, dude, this is so fucked up. You're very compromising. And he was, he was making my life hard, because I knew it. Because you knew he yeah. was, yeah. So he think he makes everyone else think he's sober, but you know he's on. Yeah, plane. and he's yeah. just like fucking with me. I, I had a full time job at this point. And yeah, it feels uh, mad unfair. Yeah, he he comes in at like eleven at night and he's like, "We have a house meeting. Get up." I'm like, "Dude, I have to go to work in five hours." Yeah. He's like, "Well, you gotta take your shit and move upstairs right now." I'm like, are you? This can't wait till tomorrow. Yeah. Like, what the right. fuck? Like, what is going on here? So I just packed my shit and went to the apartment I was gonna That's go it. and had no furniture and just like fuck whatever, it. dude. Freedom. This is better. Yeah. 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 That sounds like he was a tyrant. Dude. That sucks. Yeah. No, sober living. Can't stand that guy. Yeah. Hey, for 400 hours a month, you could live in a sober living house. <laughs> yeah, no, it's <laughs> fucked with. 650 bucks a month. 650. And you're living with and 10 the, dudes. And not in, even Vegas, right? Uh, yeah. In, in nowhere. Yeah. Where were you at? Like, well, uh, yeah, this was in Vegas, but uh, like it was like but outskirts. not in the city. Yeah. yeah that's yeah. what I mean. This is in the area where you can buy $50,000 houses. Yeah. Fire. Yeah. In the yeah. middle of nowhere. Yeah. In the middle of nowhere, 12 minutes off the big strip. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they're, they're raking in like anywhere from like six to seven grand a month just from rent. Oh, my yeah. God. And they're, they're, like they're, a yeah, their mortgages or whatever is like a thousand a month, maybe less. And they don't yeah. get more money for you getting sober. Right. They get more money for you relapsing because mm -hmm. the open bed, someone, they keep your money and then bring in someone else. And so they get more money if you relapse. Yeah. Did you... What was the mechanism that kept you sober through that? So I know that obviously you had some encouragement, some love coming in, and these helped you, but did you do the 12 steps? Did you do the NA? What, uh, yeah. what, what uh, was your habit that got you through right there? Yeah, I was, I was actually forced to go to NA, and that was bad for me because I never wanted to go to NA, and the people there I, I don't agree with. Uh, I never did a single step of a 12 step. I, I mean, I understood it, I read it, but I didn't do the work. You've done them, but just not as their result. Yeah, no way, right? yeah. yeah. So like, yeah. I mean, it all seemed pretty like uh, this has already been done in my head in a week's time, you know, before I even knew about it. So, um, I don't know what, maybe, maybe it was uh, the fear of being like a felon or going back to prison at first, like, yeah. and, but then it, what, it started becoming like kind of cool to be collecting sober days. Like, right. I don't want to fuck up this collection I have yeah. because each day I'm getting another one, another one, I'm getting stronger and stronger and everything improving, improving, improving. Yeah. I mean, there's some so you're building a you were building essentially a positive reinforcement loop in your head. Yeah. The same way you did the negative one initially. Basically. Right. Yeah. yeah. You were going every day. 
I feel good because I did this. Tomorrow I'm going to get another one. Yeah. And then there you go. Yeah. Let's see if I can do it the fastest I can do it. Like pay all my fines, do it, do everything right. Don't get a dirty piss test. Don't like nothing. Yeah. Just, would you would you say you approach that with the same obsessive nature as you did learning BMX? Exactly. Yeah. No. Exactly. Yeah. For that. Well, try and true. Yeah. Just yeah, just want to be use, the best at what use I have what to works, do. Right. Right. Yeah. So it it almost made it pretty easy for me once I got going. Yeah. Like like okay, this isn't bad. And then it just got easier and easier. Like uh, less intense counseling. Don't have to come to court as much. And then don't have to. You know, probation wasn't as intense. I had a curfew for a while. And then they took that off, and then I had my job, and so everything was just like robot mode, just do yeah. it, just do it, just Grind do it. through it, you know? get the drug court yeah. over. get that over with, right on the weekend, and that was it. Yeah. Yeah. Crazy, man. That's, that's an inspiring story, to be able to, to be able to really, I mean, I, there are many points in there that are points of no yeah. return. Yeah. That's wild, man. So... From a clean-cut young kid that wasn't into partying to a slightly less clean-cut guy living <laughs> under bridges in and out of jail. Yeah, committing crimes constantly. Yep, we've, we've taken quite a journey there. Something, yeah, it's just like something I never thought I would be. Like when I envisioned where I am, like my age now, I had a car, a house, a wife, yeah. kids, and that didn't happen at yeah. all. So I, know, I know we talked about this and I asked if you'd ever read Eckhart Tolle before, but it, a big thing he says, you know, is that that's not your life. That was your life situation. Yeah. You know, that your life is a constantly evolving thing. Yeah. You know, I know how you felt. You were thinking, well, when I get out of this, I'm going to, I'm going to be a junkie to everybody. Right. But that was such a small part of your life. Yeah. It was a situation for, you know, less than 10 years. Yeah. You know, it's nothing. Yeah. It's, it's not your life in any form. Yeah, I'm right? hoping, yeah, that won't even be remembered Sooner it's only later. as remembered yeah. as you remember, <laughs> right? Because yeah. it's only your situation. Yeah. To all of us, it's actually at this point a thing you got over. Right. It's a footnote, yeah. you know. Um, and really, I mean, you must have learned a lot from it. Man, yeah, I learned more from that than college. Right. So, I, mean, I mean, I could be. I can't imagine. <laughs> I could be content like having nothing because I had that. Right. And like, having nothing without a drug addiction. I can be content. Right, that's gold yeah. now. Like I, I literally could live in my car and be like, all right, but at least I'm happy. Yeah. You know, I don't need all this material shit. Like at the end of my addiction, I had all that's the material shit. That's the crazy shit. part is you actually experienced. Yeah, that. and I'm just like, this isn't obviously not making anyone here happy. Yeah. And it's actually making it what much it's worse. On the it's fire. like it's like trust issues, like just like jealous issues, like just mm-hmm. all kinds of shit comes from that money and material shit couldn't that, agree more like i know i don't need it anymore yeah that that is a lesson few have learned and yeah it's an amazing one to have gotten from from such a crazy situation for yeah. sure yeah that's that's something else man so I, I was gonna ask how many times it took you to get clean if there were any ways that didn't work that type of thing but really you just did it yeah you didn't just, try yeah. ways yeah you just went for it because you made the decision in your head yeah and that's really you know that is the message if there were two messages to come from this, from me, not from you, because I'm sure you'll have some interesting ones of your own, but but it would be one, it's just a change you make in your head. That's it. Yeah. That's it. You, anybody can make it at any moment they want to. It's there, right. but nobody feels like they have that power. They all yeah. do, but nobody it's, feels yeah, empowered it's, it's to do it. It's as simple know? as making that decision yeah. and just going with it yeah. and trying. You have to try. And the, I would say that and withdrawals are pure hype. Right. It's a terrible thing. But being a heroin addict is worse. Much worse. Yeah. It's, than that week. Yeah. It's yeah. not a big deal, man. Such if you're a, a heroin addict, time. you've had bad weeks. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. So a, a bad week, you can deal with a bad week if you're a heroin addict. Um, get off the heroin, guys. Come on. <laughs> Wasting your time out here. You can do it if I did it. Yeah. Let's listen, listen to Ryan. So, uh, you know, on that note, I know this is too broad of a subject, but homelessness is just insane. It is so rampant. Anywhere with the city along, at least the West Coast, mm-hmm. is just full of homeless people. Yeah. A large percentage of them who have went through exactly what Ryan went through. Ryan, how do we solve it? 
Once again. Uh, Once again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no, man. I think you would know more because you see it all the time by OSS, right? Uh, not so much anymore. Not the new We're OSS. on Melrose now. Oh, that's right. So yeah, yeah, yeah. We get little classy on the still, hell. dude. No. It's it's downtown. They're over there still, though. Yeah, I saw yeah, yeah, them. Yeah, yeah, there's about one that's like posted up next to the power box right next to yeah. the store right now. It's crazy. Downtown's like a different beast, though. Like, all Skid Row is bigger and bigger and bigger. Skid Row is like, it's a Skid 12 blocks now. Yeah. It's like, like, it goes from the Broad yeah, to it, Skid Row. It went from being like two side streets to being like yeah. a square mile. All of the it's, ones uh, below the hill. Yeah. yeah. I, I drove through there and my, I couldn't close my mouth. It's I was just like, crazy. What in is the street, going on? tents in the yeah. street, like people it's everywhere. It's nuts. What's the deal? <sighs> Fuck, I don't know. I, okay. I'm going to go out on a limb here. But I'm going to go with side effect of delusional material object desire. Being in L.A.? Being in America. Being in True. the world. Yeah. You know? Um, the pressure of feeling that you need these things to be a valuable human is too yeah. much given how hard it is to get it. True. And then, and then, of course, flip it to the fact that any of those things won't get you out of it. So you're chasing the wrong thing. Yeah. Just, you know, I feel yeah. like it's a whole wild goose chase of the wrong thing this is a flat circle it doesn't yeah. go anywhere and when it hits you what do you do you know there's just no answer yeah. Yeah. another aspect is true mental illness of course drug, yeah. drug addiction yeah all that like true mental illness is too crazy to talk about that's right. the problem right it's yeah. something we can't even grasp but i do feel like it's a smaller part of it than people think yeah. think oh yeah for sure people yeah. think that's what's really going on but i would say well all of us have a little mental illness yeah but you throw a bunch of heroin onto it and it expands quickly mm -hmm. Dude, you all, throw, all, you all throw not is, sleeping for years on it yeah you're a whole different yeah. person it, all it takes is one bad month no good food for anybody it, right? not being able to pay rent yeah and vitamin find deficiencies yourself, you know, on you know like a crazy iron deficiency yeah every year. just mm -hmm. sickness yeah that shit makes you schizophrenic it's not specifically that i just mean just in these different deficiencies affect your brain in many different ways. And I just feel like the pressure that people have to move to the city, mm -hmm. to assimilate, to take on, you know, I need these material things. This whole thing that is so different from the root of the childhood, especially if they didn't live in a city, that type of thing. You mm -hmm. know, it causes them to grow, to manifest anxiety. You know, a thing that doesn't, isn't even really real. You know, it's yeah. crazy. It's, but it's a fear of something you don't know. Yeah. It's wild. But, yeah, it's crazy. But yeah. what, what's the answer, man? Hook me up here. I need to know. I'm trying to tell people. <laughs> Don't be scared. I like that. No, I would say that. That's yeah. a good one, actually. Yeah. Yeah, I'll take that. Don't be scared. Yeah, there you go. I'll Don't be scared. Get off the drugs. Get off the material possessions. Don't be scared. Yeah. Do not. So, there we go, man. We grinded through the bad moment. We grinded yeah. through it. Yeah. We're on to the redemption zone. Okay. So what's next here, man? Give, me, give it to me when things finally start getting better. You're riding your bike all the time. Yeah. So, you move back with your family. Yeah, I'm living I with had my to brother. Be huge. Yeah, so, I mean, that, them helping me is huge because it makes it easier for me to ride my bike right now. Yeah. I mean, keeps your head straight. Yeah, it keeps me, my head straight. And my brother has, like, two, like, gorgeous daughters that I can help raise and my girlfriend has a baby I'm helping raise, so like it's all this is like other things to put my head into. Yeah, sounds like a whole lot of things reinforcing your love for yourself. Yeah, you know, allowing you to prove that you have value. Yeah, and it seems I, like the biggest BMX scene is definitely helping too because we went to that jam. There's a lot of people there. We, yeah, yeah. 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 So if you guys shots, saw that, we yeah. went to a jam celebrating Ryan's two-year sobriety. Yeah. Huge jam. A lot of people. Tons of kids. There a lot was of people. this. This park was not located anywhere near anything, so these people made a trip. Yeah. They were barbecuing, brought yeah. their families. It was sick. It was a great yeah, day. That 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 shit rocked my heart for sure. I was just like, there we go. That, this is crazy. A lot of people. I mean, yeah, but we yeah. drove five hours. Yeah, you guys. We drove five hours, hours for that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> one, one band. I made Phil go to that. Phil and Stevie. Actually. Yeah. Yep. They didn't know what I was talking about. I remember <laughs> getting in the car and they're like, "What are we doing? Yeah. Oh, we're going to celebrate a friend of mine's not being on heroin anymore. Yeah. Let's run it. Yeah. yeah let's go. go. <laughs> All right. I guess that's as good a reason to say. <laughs> yeah, that's what I can do. It. So and cool. it was a great trip. Yeah. yeah, it was good. It was fun. It was cool. The gym was sick. So, wow, man. So we're through it all. And I'm curious, how, how does the bike riding feel to you now, out of curiosity? Do you, do you still have the same obsession with it that you did before? Is it yeah. more or less? It's more. Yeah, absolutely. It's feeling so good. And I, that might have something to do with like the change that bikes made 
while I wasn't. You know that's a big one. Yeah. God, they so, were so wrong for it's us. A, yeah, just. Tiny bars. Oh. It just feels. Highball down. Yeah. Man. Damn it. Yeah. For you just <laughs> listening to audio, that's the sound of a highball. So that's a dollar wasted. Yeah. Damn. Three dollars. That's a lot of caffeine. In the yeah. <laughs> so yeah, bikes got amazing. Yeah. Right? They, yeah. Back ends so, got shorter, bars got taller, and backs stopped hurting. Yeah. Exactly. You know, so, we could bunny hop. It yes. Nice. It just it felt so much more natural and so much more of a extension of my body than the bikes before yeah so couldn't agree more yeah so that that feels great and it makes certain tricks different feeling but you get used to it what bike do you have now uh, i got that stranger crux <laughs> oh the one we took the one uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah i forgot yeah, yeah. we brought him that yeah, yeah, yeah. and that trip i don't remember why the fuck is there a frame box block <laughs> <laughs> that's what me the fuck rich yeah um that's it crux is a good frame it's a good frame. Yeah, I, have a to, light I, frame. I have to thank you so much for like, helping me out with bike parts because I'm not in the position to buy bike parts. So Yeah, shout out Rich. I got bike dude, parts today. I, I, I thank you for accepting it. Dude. You know, it's a full circle, man. The fact the fact that I can what it does for me to be able to help you in any way is, is more than what it does for you. Put it that way. You know, we yeah. all need to be helping people. True. It people don't realize it, but doing something for somebody else is the ultimate. That's yeah. what it comes down to. Make people know? happy. Get addicted to that shit, man. Like, really, get addicted to it. That's the move. That's that's my one piece of advice. Get mm -hmm. addicted to it. Helping people and being thankful. But uh, moving on, moving on here. I, you What's went, our time stamp? We grinded right through all my notes. I don't know where we're at. I have nothing that says the time. Oh, the camera's at one hour and seven There's also minutes. a time marker right there. That's... This is a weird long. Yeah, weird, no, that's, long I don't know. That's in GarageBand code. I'm not sure what's going on. It might be in seconds. Sick. 2,189 seconds, I think. So All right. Add that shit up. Nope. Um, so, Phil, sober guy here. Ryan, now sober guy here. I'm pretty sober myself. I drink a little bit too much. Um, but I'm working on it. I've seen you partake in the daiquiri. Yeah, I'm working on it. You know, I'm working on me every day. We all are. Um... I'm curious, what's next for you, man? What, where does it go yeah, from What's here? on the docket? Um, oh, actually, let, let's just stop that for a minute here because right. I actually missed an entirely huge point. You just got off probation. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, that's why you're here. That's why yeah. I'm here. This is a big celebration right now. Yeah. Yeah, yeah my public defender said, uh, he called me and told me, and he said 95% of people don't complete probation, so this is huge. And I was just like, wow, okay, yeah. cool. And then... Uh, Another weird chain of events, I got in contact with, uh, with a documentary uh, TV station thing for like Nevada, and they're, they're coming down to film like a day in the life of me, like the day I get back from California, and then go into my court date for my felony being dropped, so they're going to film all that, and that's going to be like out on the end of August, I think. It's like your swan song. That's the it end really of is. Man. Yeah, that's yeah. sick. Yeah. yeah. That's so, look at that circle, man. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's some wild. shit right there. It's some shit that's crazy because if you didn't have that dip, yeah. it wouldn't mean anything. Yeah. yeah. So, like, I'm being used, to, like, as an example of what to do in life when just yeah. two years ago I was like, do not fucking yeah, do Yeah, you would have been used as an example has, on the other end. Yeah. Has don't your, fucking do this. Yeah. Have, have you learned to get to a point where you don't feel weird accepting that yet? Yeah, I think so. Good. Yeah. Because you uh, deserve it, man. It's a big deal. Yeah, dude. And I'm dabbling in my head with wanting to become a drug counselor because I feel like I would relate a lot more than these book book smart yeah. counselors mm -hmm. because, I mean, I did go to college. I did get a psychology degree, but I also got a street degree. So, yeah. like... That's the both worlds. Yeah, you got think, most yeah of that would be, like, 21 jumps. If I could fall into that and get paid to just to do what I'm already doing. Yeah. Like, you should fucking go on intervention and become an intervention counselor. Yeah, yeah. So you got the connects. I don't, but I watch a lot of intervention. <laughs> yeah. I know Jeff Van Bonderen. <laughs> I don't, I've never even seen that show. Oh, man, it's yeah. awesome. It's a good one. It's, yeah, intervention's rad. No, like, you, like, most people who are super successful with that are people who have fucking been in the trenches and then made it out. If you have some kid that's 25 that's like, oh, hey, I went to Harvard. And he's like, I don't want fucking advice from you. Yeah, it almost no, shuts, you, shuts yeah. you off to that. Yeah, yeah, I want this dude who's, like, been through it, who was fucking, yeah. was... No offense, well, no offense to people that took the regular path. Full but, offense. For sure. <laughs> no street cred. Right? Yeah, we're polar opposites out here. Yeah. Right? <laughs> I'm in the middle there. So. Yang over here, Yang yeah. over here. <laughs> no, yeah, I mean, if 
you commit your life to like learning that stuff, you're gonna know something. But yeah. if with me, I, I'm not gonna take advice from somebody how to do a barsman who can't barsman. Well, it's yeah. interesting because you know in business, it's the same. Um, yeah, it's we, the people that I want. Eat, you know, business, bike riding, it's all the same Everything. thing. But when you put it together, what they tell you in school that you need to do, which is follow the rules, mm -hmm. repeat what I said, do exactly what I did, nobody wants that. Nope. There's no use for that in the world. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I have no reason to duplicate me. Yeah. I need somebody to advance what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. Think outside the box. Yeah. You know? And that's what drug users need to. That's yeah. the thing. They need somebody that's outsmarting them. They need somebody that gets all the tricks, gets all the self-doubt and pity from it. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and most particularly, that doesn't make them feel bad about it. Yeah. Because it's just a situation. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. It's not a bad thing. You're not a bad person. There's no such thing as that. Yeah. Just all circumstance. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just, you went here and you ended up here. It's, how can we get you back? Yeah. yeah you know? The fact that you're like so open about it, you could probably be a great drug user. Yeah, man. Yeah. That's, like for sure. That's huge. Because most people don't want to talk about that shit. Right. Like at all, oh, it's a dark time in my life. Don't talk about it. It's yeah. Like, Everyone's gonna like, do it. This makes me look bad, but yeah, it's like no, fuck that. Like yeah. I'd be hyped if I was like, yeah, dude, did this drugs for this long, and now I'm over it. Yeah, that's tight. That's an accomplishment. Yeah, yeah really high five to you, bro. Yeah, yeah. five after. <laughs> yeah, we're all five. Gonna, that was not a real five. That was just right. <laughs> we're five. all gonna touch dicks right after we turn <laughs> the camera off. Oh, okay. Just yeah. kidding. <laughs> so uh, on to another subject here. Um, I'm curious. Now this one's a crazy question too. So blame me, but. Have you reached a point where you can see the addiction is a good thing that happened to you? Yeah, because I, I don't regret anything, and I wouldn't be sitting right here, right now. That's what I'm talking hopefully about. Hopefully inspiring somebody not to do what I did. Right, or you're inspiring me and Phil not yeah, to do heroin. Just facts. Yeah, so. <laughs> so that's two. I mean. There, if this recorded, at least one more. Yeah, there, there's. <laughs> There's good in everything, and there's bad in everything. Yeah. If you look at the good and the positive, that's how it's going to be. Yeah. True. It's all just energy, man. That's yeah. how we decipher it, right? Yeah. Crazy. Well, there you go. Really, to me, that's the crowning achievement of anything and anybody, man. If you can find your bad moment and say, you know what? That was actually the greatest thing that ever happened to me. Yeah, I've, right. I've had to come to terms with that multiple times, you know, through injuries, et cetera, et cetera. You know, this all yeah. tra traces back to a fucking broken wrist, man. Right. right. And yeah. that's some shit. So crazy. Yeah. yeah. There's always, there's Shout always out to the medical system. <laughs> so there's always times when you're in like a situation that sucks and like, oh, grass is always greener, but you never like go to that other you gotta field. You got to go there. there. If you don't yeah. go there, then it's like you're stuck in the thing, fucking flat circle. So yeah. yeah, definitely. Yeah, you hiked over the hill and now you're out of it, which is yeah. crazy. Yeah. yeah. It's like, I can't imagine what the odds on that is. It was like someone going zero. that long. There's zero. Yeah. It's, yeah, yeah definitely. This is not even happening right now. No, oh, yeah, for sure. This is an alternate reality. It didn't actually happen. happen. Yeah, exactly. In the Matrix. Yeah, it's a glitch, man. Where's Keanu? So, I, um, I do want to mention, uh, sorry to cut you off, shout yeah. out to Kyle Carlson and Vital. They've yeah. been supporting Ryan a lot. They yeah, did a podcast yeah. with them already. Go check that out. I'll put a link. Uh, I don't actually know how this video is going to go up, but somehow there'll be a link with It'll it. Be a link so, that, that one's called The Rollback. Uh, right, his podcast. specific podcast yeah. is the rollback, but Vital did some but videos. Vital did some videos. Did video, yeah. 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 Which you had some sick clips. Yeah, yeah. good on them for doing. Yeah. Which I had to ask you whether or not you were shit footed. Or <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No offense. Which one is it? Yeah. Fucking tell me the truth. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, go watch a video. Sick. Yeah. Okay. He does a sick disaster Killing over him. on a rail, which I've always been so scared. That's a rare move. Dude, Shout out to Mike Brennan. Yeah. Yeah. There's one thing I'm gonna shout him out for. He's I the love, owner I of the sprocket over. Yeah, he literally is that and like crazy whips. Like, yeah, crazy whips to like flat. Line. I think he might have broke a frame top tip before doing whips to frame. Like, Jesus Christ! Like he eventually did the pedals, but he was like one of the OGs doing them to frame on just crazy shit. I think he was bending kick throughs. He's if it wasn't him, man. it was like Max Gertig or something. He's a hefty dude too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a savage. He's, He's throwing lumberjack. Him. But yeah, anyways, disaster over. Yeah, What's shout there? out to all those guys and all that <laughs> random segue we just ran into. So yeah, I don't think we got a lot more to talk about here. I just really wanted to go through that with you. Phil yeah. And Phil, of course. Um, yeah. Thank you for being here. Really excited to see what you do. You know, we'll obviously be in touch. Yeah. We're reconnected now, so. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, man, just fucking shout out to Ryan. It's, thank it's you for coming through. It's all forward from here. Yeah, sure. man. Yeah. Thanks for, thank you for having me. Being the first guest yeah. is, is an honor. The inaugural guest. So, yeah. yeah, dude. You see if it even recorded. But, yeah, yeah, if this <laughs> recorded, wait till you see it. Oh, yeah. You're in for a treat. <laughs> yeah, next week, uh, I don't, Phil, 
are we doing this weekly, monthly? Stevie Churchill coming soon. Oh, okay. Uh, well, Stevie might be on here. So there's no my. I'm his roommate. If he doesn't do it, I'm taking him out. <laughs> um, we don't plan on these only being about heroin. Um, we Facts. don't know what they'll be about. We're just kind of talking about life with people that we yeah. like. So it's nice to see the different side of people other than BMX. All the way to talk about BMX. Yeah, I love bit. BMX. It's yeah. great. It's a common bond we have, and uh, I think when you de- dig down to the roots of it, there's a lot of a lot of things that, you know, it's not BMX, it's that drive, right? It's yeah. what we have that, that caused us to get here. Yeah, you know, yeah, like, why why are the front? three of us in this room right now? You know, we're, yeah, yeah. None of us are from California. Well, you're from Fresno? I'm from California. But you're yeah, not we, from L.A. No, I'm not I just LA. mean we all ended up here in L.A., far from home, because we were trying to do something. I'm from yeah. a huge meth capital it's, it's so, yeah. of like California, yeah. Fresno. Is. Meth-free, too. Meth-free, yeah. Very just, rare. Just barely. Just barely meth-free. Just barely. That's still meth-free. Yeah. So uh, next week, murder mystery, and uh, Fuck, I still can't get and maybe story. some Stevie Churchill. And uh, thanks for watching. Do I ask people to subscribe? On oh yeah, like, share, comment, subscribe, follow me on Instagram at Phil Bro. Oh yeah, get me on the uh, what is it? <laughs> Dead Ender Twenty Three. Dead oh, Ender yeah. Twenty Three. Follow everybody. I yeah, have yeah. like a thousand followers, so I need more. I don't follow them, but I'm going to. Right? <laughs> I follow you. I buddy. fucked up. So, so there we go. Uh, that's a wrap. Thank you, everybody. And yeah, more podcasts coming soon from this hot fucking apartment. Yeah. <laughs> Holy shit. Yeah. Steambox, episode two. That's soon. the new name of it, Steambox. <laughs> the Steambox. <laughs> All right. That's a wrap. Woo. Sick. Sick.